Hey, how's it going? I'm Chris with PearsonCopy.com, and I'm here to help your brand make more sales with email. Uh, today, as a part of my 100 emails in 100, 100 days uh, breakdown challenge, I'm breaking down an email from a brand, um, I believe, out of Texas. Yep, Lakeway, Texas, um, called Cor- called Corthard, um, and they sell paddle boards. So, or that's one of the products, at least. Um, and so this is a welcome email. I sent it to their list because, um, I found them through a Facebook ad. I was just scrolling through my Facebook feed. That's usually where I find these brands is they're, they're, um, advertising to me, uh, for the types of products that I do buy and use. So if you're looking to uh, find other, other e-com brands in your space or Facebook ads that other people are running, that's a great place to do. Just start in your Facebook feed. Um, with that being said, this is a welcome email. This is the first email they sent me. Um, and I'm going to break this down with that context in mind. Um, so to start, uh, their their uh, subject line here. Welcome to Core Third. Save on your first order. So this is a pretty standard. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the brand. Welcome to etc. Um, and then the second part of this is the offer, which is you know ten percent off inside or discount inside or code for your next purchase inside. But what Core Third does, and, and the reason why I picked this email to break down is they say save on your first order. So this save on your first order is pro- is more more than likely not going to get caught by any kind of filters uh, because it doesn't have any kind of uh, like spam uh, spam type or um, deal discount free uh, code or anything like that in the subject line. So that is a thing that can happen with subject lines. If you're getting your first emails that have discount codes inside and you have discount in the subject line, but it's going to promo or spam, um, that's one thing you could test to see if that's that little change could make a difference um, is take code free discount, something like that, that relates to um, a percentage off or an offer inside the email out of the subject line and change it to something more subtle, like save on your first order. So if you have deliverability issues, messing with the subject line, as well as your technical stuff in the background um, could help a ton. So uh, with that being said, that's that's the main reason why I picked uh, picked up on this email um, and wanted to break it down for you. Uh, moving to the from name from email, they do pretty standard, standard straightforward, the brand name plus uh, their from email support at corthor.com. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, pretty standard. It's clean. They don't use a subdomain, which is pretty nice. Um, it's not confusing if you want to reply. Uh, they don't have a reply, a reply to address selected, which isn't a big deal. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, so as long as people can reply to this support at email uh, and get a response, um, that's fine. Um, I would suggest changing this if they want to stay with the brand name, uh, uh, brand name for the front name, and then the front email. I would change this from support to something else, uh, support, customer service, information, things like that. Um, don't make it feel real. It makes it feel like it's just an automation, and people uh, turn that off in their brain if they say, "Oh, it's an automation. It's not a real person." They don't pay as much as much attention to your sales message. So if you change this to like "hello at" or um, maybe John and Corther, John at Corther.com, uh, whoever the founders' names or anybody that's actually running the email marketing, uh, give the brand a name. Uh, that can be the face of the company or some kind of mascot like Dr. Squatch does, which I've done a video on their their emails too. Um, some kind of mascot or something as a face to the brand. Um, it's going to make a more personal, emotional connection. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and roll on down this. Uh, my, my PDF copied this logo twice, but there's only one. So uh, like most of the emails I've done so far, I think that most of the brands that I've, I've broken down so far, they do this great. They have their logo and their, their brand name right at the top in the center, nothing else. Uh, super clean, super simple. The eyes are... Um, Attracted to this really easily, they can consume it and they can move on. Um, having a heavy menu or heavy items at the top before they even get to the code or the coupon offer um, doesn't really help a ton. Uh, they may scroll back up and click on those things, but when to get them to that discount or whatever you're supposed to be giving them as soon as possible. Um, you can leverage that to put some copy before the offer to get them to read it so you can deliver your message plus give them the code after. But that's that's based on like plain text copy and sales, like direct response and sales messaging. Um, when it comes to branding and images, people scroll past them really quickly because they're easily they're more easily consumed because it's an image your brain processes images way easier than they do words but what that what what images don't have is they don't have the ability to influence as as um as powerfully as words do so that's the trade-off you get when you use a lot of design is you get easy consumption but you get less influence on the customer psychology and brain and decision making so um just a little tidbit there for you um, moving on down below the logo and the brand name, we have the branded image. Uh, we have the two ladies here in, it looks like a river or a lake. Um, and they are here with the products, um, the paddle boards, the core third paddle boards or the product. So um, I'm liking that brands are using branded images and they're getting images and shots of their products inside the image. Uh, they're not stock images, which I've seen some brands do. Um, having your brand, uh, brand or sorry, your product in the image helps a ton. Um, and then moving past this, once they scroll past this image, um, they have a simple thanks for signing up. That's great. That's perfect. You're, you're acknowledging the fact that somebody signed up to your list. Um, and then the first line here, we're glad you're here. You have a lot to look forward to. Um, I think that we're glad you're here is great. It, may, it creates a positive association of like, hey, they know I'm here. Thanks for saying you're glad I'm here. That's a connection point. But the piece that you have a lot to look forward to, um, it's an attempt at anticipation, but it doesn't really connect with me because 
Uh, for me anyway, it could for other people, but it's like, what am I supposed to be looking forward to? Um, I know exactly what I'm supposed to have in this email. It's supposed to be a discount code. That's what I'm looking for. So this, this right here may, could be updated to say, Hey, we're going to let you know about something special. So you can save even more on top of the code we gave you, um, be more specific with what to look forward to. And I think that would do better for this part here just to get them to keep reading or at least trigger, um, uh, stick in their brain that they should stick around for other emails after they use their code. Um, so yeah, there's that, uh, next, next piece here is to start with, uh, you can say 20%, 25% off your first order, uh, simply use discount code core 25 at checkout and, um, the savings will be applied. So this is your standard, uh, checkout code or sorry, discount code. Um, it's simple core 25. It's simple. It's easy. It's really, uh, it's easy to remember. So if I read this email, forget, go to my phone, go to my cousin's house, whatever. And then say, Oh yeah, we're talking about paddle boards. I was supposed to order that. I know the code is core 25 cause that's their brand name, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's really easy to use. So I really appreciate brands when they do this. Um, the, the easier and simpler the codes are, the better, the less friction it is for the customer to actually use and buy. Uh, if you've got a code that has, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, character string or string of characters, uh, it may autofill on the checkout. Um, but that's only if they're in the browser they use to open the email or sign up, uh, if they're on their phone later or even ordering literally on their phone while they're looking at the email, um, at their desk or at the couch or wherever, uh, with the laptop and phone in front of them. It's cause I know some people that do that. They search and do stuff on their computer when they order, they do it on their phone cause they like that better. Um, cause they have the card saved or something, uh, having a, a long string of characters for your, your coupon code could cause friction and uh, reduce the number of sales you get. So, um, that's something to consider when it comes to coupon codes. Uh, we'll be passing along exciting content as well as updates on new products, promotions, and much more. This is a great this is a great line. Um, this is setting expectations and letting the customer know, uh, the reader know that this is what you're getting um, as long as you're on our email list. Um, whether you buy from us or not, this is what we're gonna send you. So that's great. And then welcome to the core. I like the fact that they call themselves the core. Um, there's some other, um, I believe in the military, and some other groups that call themselves the core. Um, so that's great. It makes it feel exclusive. It makes it feel like there's a status piece to it, like you're part of the core now. Um, so yeah, I think they should lean on this and other welcome emails in their welcome series uh, to explain what the core is and why it exists. Um, in, in the origin story of the brand or the creation story of the product, you could talk about why the core was created because it was a, I mean, for it could, for example, it could be like the core was created so we could create products like paddle boards that were better than what's everything else in the industry. And they may be military or something like that. So they can share that story too. So um, I would expand on the core a little bit when it comes to future uh, welcome emails. Um, and I'll look for those. And if, if I do get some, I'll break them out and show them to you guys. So, uh, and then finally you have your standard social and footer information. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Social icons for information with the mailing address, et cetera, with unsubscribe. Um, and then the last piece here, uh, it looks like uh, they're using the free version of Klaviyo. Um, this is totally fine to start out. If you're a brand and you need to use a free version of Klaviyo, that's totally fine. But as soon as you possibly can, pay for the lowest tier to get this to get this logo uh, removed from your emails. Uh, one, um, it makes, uh, the, the, I understand the startup costs and everything like that, but if you have this at the bottom of your email, um, it's just going to make it look like, Hey, why, why am I clicking through to Klaviyo? You might get people clicking this and thinking, what is Klaviyo? What, you know, what do I do? Um, and so, and two, if you get this removed, it just keeps everything on brand on point when it comes to the message, the images and the sales, uh, the sales process, right. To the email. So uh, with that being said, those are the insights that um, I would take away from this email. Uh, please take some of these back to your brand if they resonated and see if you can make more sales with it. Um, in the meantime, check out my YouTube channel where I have other um, where I have other videos that I'm breaking down emails. I'm doing 100 emails in 100 days. Um, and then, yeah, with that being said, um, check out those videos and I'll talk to you later.